What's up? Welcome in. John Z is back. How back. you doing, my friend? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, uh, I miss my sense of taste and smell, but we're good. Yeah. You know, coffee, I love coffee. Usually I drink coffee when we're doing this show, Adam. Yeah. Um, it tastes like a bag of salt right now, and, and I kind of miss that tea. Uh, we got tea here. That, that's been more tolerable, but we're doing better. We're a bit tired, but... Was it going to miss this podcast, my friend? No, we got a good one today. Uh, Jason McKee and Olin Krutz are on. They're always fired up and uh, a lot of good stuff to come in this podcast. But glad you're back, my friend. I totally agree with you. When I dealt with COVID last year, the uh, there's a lot of things that aren't great about it. So uh, please take it seriously. But one of the residual effects of not having taste and smell, um, to me, coffee is not just like a taste it's like aroma it's yeah something you, it's, a, it's, it's something experience. you have to smell <laughs> yeah uh to wake up not just consume the actual caffeine like it so i actually think i went to uh um like drinking like coke in the morning or which you, i couldn't taste either but it was like the coffee part of it to you couldn't smell it you couldn't experience yeah. like you said experience it it was awful yeah it was, and, I, it, and like, i and i didn't feel awake because of it yeah, like certain things are coming back, um, but of all the things that I have tasted and consumed since the, my, my flight with COVID here, it's uh, coffee is tasted by far the worst. And I'm usually a, a two cup guy, like a day, like one in the morning, one in the afternoon, maybe an occasional tea, but it's full tea now, full tea now. But we're doing well. Um, everybody's doing well here at, at my house. Um, it's good to be back, man. Hey, hang on one second. Sorry. Oh, that was just mean. That was just mean. (laughs) Have to be watching on YouTube to know what I just did. But yeah, I'll drink my tea. I I took a sip of coffee in front of him. (laughs) If it makes you feel any better, this is from like three hours ago, and it's ice cold. I just been sitting here on my desk. So um, no, I uh, jerk. (laughs) Yeah, that was. But you know, that's what we do on this podcast. We gotta, you know, we gotta keep it light and fun. And I missed, I missed having you there to do that. You know. But the Kevin Fishbane posted note on the podcast too. The, yeah. This is why you guys got to watch YouTube. It's Rip on that the, down. I think I got the right thing. Like, just, one of these sides. It's on one of the sides. Get that you, off you, of there. You got it. No, it's good to have you back, buddy. Uh, a lot of good stuff to talk about. Uh, as uh, we recap what happened in Green Bay, um, but also like uh, this podcast is obviously going to be a lot of big picture stuff going forward, and and to have uh, Jay Mack and Olin here to talk about it, it's going to be good. But first. Voicemails, always hot and heavy when they're playing the Packers. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, so know it. Uh, we got to get to the voicemails. Have to hear what you guys had to say. Is that game? Hey, at least it was entertaining. I mean, it was an entertaining football game. A lot, a lot happened. Um, so here we go. Here's your voicemails from uh, Sunday night in Green Bay. Hello. Do you know who this is? Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> your ass better come. Somebody! The Hogan Johns voicemail. The Hogan Johns voicemail line. Believe it or not, George isn't at home. Please leave a message at the beep. Got any questions or comments about the Bears? Give the guys a call before, after, or even during the game. Go Bears! Oh, John, Joe D. calling. Got my wife and daughter in the car. Wife, family from Green Bay, heading up to the tundra right now. Got 100% confidence those ribs are healed. Bears by 40. Bear down, baby. You know, this is before the Bears Packers game, game even starts. I'm so freaking annoyed. Perryman scores the game winning touchdown for Tampa Bay, and the Bears let him go. I, they better win. They better beat Aaron Rodgers. This is a, I've had enough. Bear down. Can we please stop running the Wildcat? We have Justin Fields who can run the damn ball. What the hell, Cole Komet? If you want to be known as a good tight end in this league, you got to catch every freaking ball that comes in your direction. Shuffle pass, Nagy for sure. Super annoyed. This first half got me feeling hyped. <laughs> the Packers. Extend Grant. And shout out the refs, they're actually calling a clean game in the first half. 
I can't believe I'm saying this. Bears special teams. Bear down, Chicago Bears. Please don't send us into misery. Bear down, Chicago Bears. Do not lose on national TV. Hogan Johns, Coach Clark here. Let me tell you something right now. That 97 return? Ooh, beautiful. Joseph Hughes can't be staring down his receivers like that. Anyways, go Bears. Bear down from Canada. Two shit. Hey, you know, halftime. Bears are winning. I'm just excited to see uh, Aaron Rodgers ruins my Sunday night yet again. Bear down. Just want to say I really hate primetime games because there's nothing worse than being constantly reminded of the fact that the past 30 years the f***ing Bears haven't been able to do s*** against the Packers. So it's like a constant reminder. Here's to the next loss. Hey, this is uh, Kevin from Champaign. Man, you know what I cannot f***ing stand? It's about two minutes to go in the third quarter. The Bears cannot make a damn halftime adjustment. I mean, what the f***? I mean, what the f***? Mad Nagy has been here for four years, okay? And everything I can damn guarantee you, every time he comes off a bye week, they're going to f***ing lose. Every time he starts off the season, they're going to lose. And every time they have a lead going into the third quarter, particularly against King Green Bay, the f***ing wheels are going to fall off. What the f*** are we doing over here? Wow. Uh, now I now I understand why I'm depressed ninety percent of the time. Coach Nagy, he just he sucks all of the oxygen out of every room. I mean, seriously, does Nagy get another job in the NFL? Does anyone hire him for any position anywhere? There's not a team in the NFL that would hire that guy for anything. Uh, is that penalty calling back that awesome muffed punt touchdown was so bears. I, 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 I got, no, I just got nothing. Just watch Pat Nagy uh, punt the ball with fourth and inches down 11 points in the fourth quarter. And I have a three legged cat uh, who has more balls than him. So. That's how this is going. Bye. Why is Kendall Vildor still on this roster? That man is a bigger liability to this football team than Ryan Gosling and Remember the Titans. Hoagie Cat. The hitch route is the most innovative route in all of football. Ask Matt Nagy. What a dumpster fire of a game. Watching the second half was like watching a constipated dog squeeze out a sh- I'm never watching another Bears game until George McCaskey comes out in the season end press conference and just says, hey, I'm sorry for everything we said last year. We are very stupid. They are so fucking dumb. I hate the owners. I hate Ryan Pace. I hate Ted Phillips. I hate Matt Nagy. I hate this team. Hey there, kiddos. Bob Dabrowski is calling in here from uh, Lambeau Field in the garbage pit of America known as Green Bay but one of the greatest cities in America known as Wisconsin. Anyway, um, the Bears have absolutely destroyed the Packers tonight. It was a beautiful night. Uh, unfortunately, they have uh, they have just gotten destroyed by the referees, and um, putting those two together, uh, it's not the Bears' night, and that's too bad, but um, whatever. Who cares? Justin Fields looked pretty good. Uh, he can run around. He can uh, throw on their hand. He looks like Patrick Mahomes with the legs of Usain Bolt. And I'll take it. I'll take that. Um, f- the Packers. F- Green Bay. F- Aaron Rodgers. Sorry for the F-bombs. Go Bears. So I only had like two thoughts from, from this game. I, I watched it at home, obviously, because I'm in full quarantine mode and my family's in full quarantine mode. So I let my, my two older sons stay up and watch the game with me. Right? Mm-hmm. Why they wanted to, I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to hang out with good old dad. But my oldest son, like in the second half, like third quarter, goes to me, Dad, why do the Bears suck? And after I uh, scolded him for using the word suck, I had no explanation for it, <laughs> to be honest. So there's that what analysis. What are we doing over here? And then. Like my, my least favorite thing of watching that game, and I watched it on the couch, was the one that felt like very 
typical of a Bears game, Bears-Packers game, where there's some fight in the first half, but you know what's coming in the second half. But when Matt Nagy decided to punt the ball yeah, on fourth and inches, that felt like quitting to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, it did. Like quitting on the game, quitting on his players, not believing in his players. It felt like just, it felt like quitting. That that's the you know what we talked about last week um, when you were in here, Johnsy. The some of the past Bears Packers moments that led to a coach getting fired. We used to talk about John Fox when he challenges the play at the goal line and then it gets flipped and it ends up with the Packers ball like that. And then there's the amazing gif of him like realizing he just Still, got fired. Uh, I mean that's how I always look at that gif. It was it was confusion and then it was his head down. I just got fired moment. Um, that was Matt Nagy's moment, punting the ball away. And the way I put it in in my column, he punted away much more than a football. Yeah. He, he punted away the game, and he probably punted away his job. I don't know if he could have saved his job at that point anyway, but that was the moment. That's the moment we're going to talk about on this podcast three years from now when we go back and talk about the Matt Nagy era. That was the moment. It was just and, – and even earlier in the game, what are you punting from the 40 from? It's fourth and seven. I get it, but you're at the forty yard line. It, the ball went in the end zone. You had a nice, okay, cool, nice twenty yard punt. They get the ball to twenty. Like what? There's no sense of urgency right out of the gate, or sense of. Uh, I mean, you're a twelve and a half point underdog. You punt from the forty, and then you kick a field goal from the five. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Even going, you know, settling for the field goal early in the game. Like, you don't beat Aaron Rodgers. I, I've covered Aaron Rodgers long enough to know that you don't beat him with field goals. They've said that. Yes. Like they've, that's, I Go back to last year. I'm pretty sure Matt Nagy said that. And then you're at the five, and I always say, well, if you're five in, you always go for it. Because if you don't get it, you back them up. You yeah. put them right where where you want them to be. I just... What are those? It, it, everybody else in that building knew those three points weren't going to make a difference at that point. No, like, yeah. Like, like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just felt like a very typical Bears-Packers game for me where you see the energy in the beginning, but the inevitable is happening. Like like we've made this joke before, like Aaron Rodgers is like Thanos. Like it's just yeah. inevitable. Like he's, it's going to happen. You have to change how you attack that inevitable. You do, but here we are. Go Bears. Anyway, uh, who cares? <laughs> oh, they broke. Uh, Bob's broke. Uh, it's tough. It's tough right now. Hey, that was a good round of voicemails. I gotta say, thank you for everybody called in. I was like, that was a good week of voicemails, and uh, you know, good luck with the three-legged cat. Yes, I, I would like to encourage more messages. I, I know Waddle and Sylvia have their bit, but I do enjoy. Uh, the parody songs? The, the parody songs. Oh, yeah. So, so if you got I was worried wrong, that they yeah. thought they called, I thought they called the wrong number for a second, but yeah. it wasn't a yeah. holiday song. So it's yeah. okay. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Just sing for us a little bit. Lighten the mood. <laughs> there was a, I haven't heard all the, I, I haven't heard all the Waddle and Sylvie parody songs this year, but there was one uh, last week, I think it was, that absolutely had me rolling. And it was, uh, I don't even remember what the song, like what tune it was being sung to, but. He's singing the song and like it's the normal lyrics where you've changed it to the Bears, and then he just like goes into a full <laughs> sentence about how Sid Luckman sucks. Like, <laughs> what? it was something like Sid Luckman. Aaron, it was like if Aaron Rodgers threw his next two thousand pass. That wasn't the exact word, but his next two thousand passes were incomplete. He would have the that would be what would have to happen for him to have the same completions percentage as Sid Lockman. <laughs> like it was well researched, well written, and then the tone of him going from singing to just like stone cold, like deadpan Sid Luckman comments. Yeah. You gotta hear it. It was so it was great. It was great. Oh, poor Sid Luckman's getting That's oh. where we are. That's where we're at. But that's the thing about this. Like, I hate to say it. I'm totally in that corner, guys. Sid Luckman wasn't a good quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Well, he may era. be the best yeah, franchise yeah. quarterback in franchise history if you want to have that argument. But that's the problem. Yeah. Well, I just go back to my ex lack of explanation for my son, who was growing up in Chicago. 
Now he's 10. Like, he is fully forming his fandom of teams now, right? Now it's just not like what his dad's like growing up yeah. and what we watched on TV. Now he knows what players are good, what teams are good. Like, explaining that to him of, like, why they suck? Well, how much time you got, son? <laughs> what the f*** are we doing over here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This episode is brought to you by Four Sigmatic, a wellness company that is well known for its delicious mushroom coffee. Four Sigmatic's mushroom coffee is real, organic, fair trade, single origin Arabica coffee with lion's mane mushroom for productivity and chaga mushroom for immune support. And I've been starting my day with Four Sigmatic's ground mushroom coffee instead of regular coffee because it helps me focus and get things done. It's amazing. I feel that uptick in productivity when I drink drink it, and it's easy on my gut, doesn't leave you with that awful jittery feeling or midday crash. And all Four Sigmatic products are organic, vegan, and gluten-free, plus every single batch is third-party lab-tested to ensure its purity and safety, so you know you're getting the highest quality coffee and mushrooms possible. And I know what you're thinking, does this coffee taste like mushrooms? No, I can guarantee you it tastes just like the coffee you love. It brews dark and nutty. It tastes incredible. They have over 20,000 five-star reviews. And best of all, they have a 100% money back guarantee. Love every sip or get your money back. And we've worked out an exclusive offer with Four Sigmatic on their best-selling mushroom coffee, but this is just for Hogan John's listeners. Get up to 40% off and free shipping on mushroom coffee bundles. To claim this deal, you must go to foursigmatic.com slash Adam. This offer is only for Hogan John's listeners, not available on the regular website. You'll save up to 40% and get free shipping. Go right now to foursigmatic.com. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com slash Adam and fuel your productivity and creativity with some delicious mushroom coffee. If you ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there's no better time than now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving Hogan John's listeners early access to all their holiday deals. It's 40% off their award winning home security. We love Simply Safe because it has everything you need to make your home safe indoor and outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, all monitored around the clock by trained professionals who send the help the instant you need it. Simply Safe was even named best home security system of 2021 by US News and World Report. You can easily customize a system for your home online in minutes and even get free custom recommendations from Simply Safe. These are Simply Safe's biggest discounts of the year. You can get a complete home security system starting at just over $100. There are no long term contracts or commitments. It's a really easy way to start feeling a bit more peace of mind. Take advantage of Simply Safe's holiday deals to get 40% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com slash athletic. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash athletic athletic for 40% off your entire system. You've probably heard about Allbirds. They make cozy shoes and apparel from premium natural materials. And they're not just comfy, they're better for the planet. Allbirds are gifts that feel as good to give as they do to wear. And I can tell you, they're great to wear. I have a pair of Allbirds. I absolutely love them. They're so comfortable. I have the burgundy color. They work well with jeans. They work well with suits. I wear them to Bears games when I'm working. And you can just wear them on a Saturday too when you're hanging around the house because they're that comfy. The classic wool runner, wool piper, and the new fluff collection make great gifts that keep you comfortable wherever your feet take you. The Mizzle Collection keeps your feet warm and dry with cozy merino wool, no slip grip, and puddle guard technology. Allbirds are machine washable, so they stay fresh and clean no matter how often you wear them. Free shipping and free returns with delivery in time for the holidays. Allbirds is on a mission to reverse climate change. They are a B Corp, making the environment a stakeholder in their business. We can create a more sustainable future together, but only if we tread lighter on the planet. So give comfort and feel joy this holiday season. Find your own pair or one to gift at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S.com. These days, it can be hard to find and hire the right candidates for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs made it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. 
Focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience and use screening questions to get your role in front of the most qualified. Then use the simple tools on LinkedIn Jobs to quickly filter and prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates worth interviewing faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash fantasy. It's linkedin.com slash fantasy to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Uh, well, we have, uh, what are we doing here? We have a, a a lot of good stuff coming your way here as uh, Jason McKee and Olin Krutz. They do uh, a, a good podcast called the No Name Football Podcast. And uh, we've been trying to figure out a good time to have them come on and kind of do a crossover event with them. Uh, they bring you the ex players perspective. We always try to bring you the, you know, the, the insider perspective, uh, being in the building every day. And so I think this, uh, will be a good conversation to have with the four of us kind of go in depth with some of the stuff we saw Sunday night and then some of the big picture stuff as well. So let's bring them in. Jason McKee, Olin Kurtz. All right. We got two great podcasts combining forces here. We're really excited about it. Jason McKee, Olin Kurtz on with us today and a ton of, to talk about, uh, but let's be honest, nothing more important, though, than James Crutes committing and getting a scholarship from the University of Illinois. So let's start right there, because that's the most important thing, more important than anything going on with anything with the Chicago Bears. So <laughs> Olin, congrats on that. I uh, was yeah. very happy when that came across Twitter yesterday, and I saw that. Well, we, we, you know, our family obviously appreciates it. And as you guys know, his older brother, Josh, is there already. Uh, he's a center in the program. So to have two uh, sons on the same team, uh, it's pretty awesome. It was his dream. Illinois was uh, where he wanted to be. He, he had no other offers. He had some interest from a lot of other schools. But uh, Coach Bilma called him late yesterday and, and let him know they had they had a scholarship for him. And, and we couldn't be more excited uh, for him to get in that program and get coached up by those guys. And, and he, of course, he's right here by us. So uh, just a good day for us all around. You got two Division One sons on, on the same team. The mm-hmm. I have three sons. We've talked about this before. And like the the battles between those two growing up, and now mm-hmm. they, they they get to continue in the the dorm rooms of, of Champaign. What's that like for them? You know, what's that like to to watch them grow up like that? Yeah, they obviously I've they they've wrestled since they were five or six. So I've had them in wrestling. They wrestled at Highland Park. Uh, They wrestled for Loyola. Uh, They wrestled over here at uh, Poeta's Training Center, which is right down the road uh, from my gym here, which is a great wrestling gym if anybody wants to get their kids into it. But anyway, all I'm saying is I've seen a lot of wrestling matches. I remember one time I walked outside. They were having a basketball game. Uh, They were in a huge fight. And we were on our way to a family vacation. So I said, look, only you two idiots would be fighting right before we go to happiest place on earth, right? So you're in the middle of Lake Forest. We're going to Disneyland, and you're in a fight. Like, I don't know, understand what you're mad about. Like, we're on the way to see Mickey Mouse. Why are we punching each other in the face? So it's been going on for a while. Uh, now they're a linebacker and a center, and it'll keep going on. But I'll tell you this. Uh, he called his brother on speakerphone and told his brother, and his brother's reaction was, let's, I don't know if you guys swear on your podcast, but let's F and go. And he screamed it. So uh, they're excited uh, to be on the same team. And uh, obviously they're excited to be, try to get Illinois back to where they want to be. Well, we, we got the Catholic League cornered today on this podcast, uh, for sure. You know, uh, <laughs> J-Mac sitting there in his Carmel office. And, uh, you know, Johnsy won't shut up about that prep bowl. I no, keep just, talking about Notre Dame, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the, 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 the Dons, <laughs> whatever a Don is, he won't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, of course, Olin and J Mac uh, host the No Name Football podcast, and uh, it's a must listen, guys. I was listening uh, the week um, I was on my way to Detroit. The week everything was going crazy. We call it what do you call that Tuesday, John? Wacky Tuesday? Is that what you call it? Wacky Tuesday? Yeah, I think I did. And we, you know, speaking of brothers fighting, the two of us were yelling at each other that week. You guys were going after it. Olin had a name, a list of names I've never seen a 
a list that long of names at Hallis Hall that needed to be called out. It was great. So anyway, our listeners, if you're not listening to this podcast, you should be checking out uh, the pod that they do as two former players going at it from a different perspective than we do from reporters who cover the team. So it's a, it's you really should be listening to both podcasts, and we appreciate you guys coming on today. Thanks for having us. Excited to uh, you know get on with you guys. Obviously, talking bears is something that you know me and brother was passionate about. Uh, you know, we definitely get our point across unfiltered. So we'll try to keep it PG on this since we're recording it, and uh, you know, hopefully give you guys a good show for the record yeah yeah we, we you can swear we just we just pick our spots you know we're not we you know we don't come out fire and we just we when when the f-bombs drop they mean a little bit more that way if you know what i mean mm-hmm. <laughs> well you know uh it's just a crazy world we live in that you guys are the hogan jams podcast and two guys with you know 20 for 25 combined years in the NFL, the no name podcast, right? So, whatever. <laughs> right, right. Just the way it right. goes. No, res- no the world respect. We live in no nowadays. respect, right? right Everybody's right. an expert. No Everybody's respect. an expert nowadays, right? Everybody's right. an expert. So, no respect. Uh, you got, you know, we get no respect. So, we just go with the no name. <laughs> no, we were, <laughs> hey, man, thanks for having us on. Obviously, uh, been a big fan. You guys know this of your guys' podcast for a while. You guys are doing a, a great job uh, giving the information that people need, man. So, uh, still listen to it. Uh, still get some of my, a lot of my information from it. So, uh, we appreciate you guys having us on. Well, guys, let's start. We'll start small picture and then jump into some of the bigger stuff. But I, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about what happened Sunday night in Green Bay. And Olin, we'll start with you on that offensive line. Because I, I, this is one of the questions I wanted to ask you. Because the Bears go from uh, having Jason Peters out there at left tackle. So, like, when you're game planning, you, based on how he's been playing so well on that left side, like, you know you just trust that guy. And so wherever you're going to... Ex- execute your help and protections, knowing that you have a quarterback, a rookie quarterback who's hurt, got hurt ribs, not 100% going into that game. All of a sudden, things change very quickly when Jason gets hurt. And now you have a rookie who hasn't really played football in 13 months. Uh, and he, when he did, he was on the right side instead of the left, going in there at left tackle. How much changes on the fly there within the game and how ready for that did you feel like the bears were when you saw i guess what the protections were when they when they rolled uh tevin jenkins into the game yeah your first thought is it should change a lot right it should change a lot with tevin jenkins in there obviously not super excited about the game plan overall anyway they went empty early uh justin fields got hit early uh the run game really was more um it was more trying to trick them than concepts. I'm going to run my outside zone. I'm going to run my power scheme. I'll run my gap scheme. It was more, you know, a reverse to, uh, uh, sweep to Jakeem Grant and Wildcat and things of that nature, which when you're watching, you just think, man, this is not sustainable, right? Like this is not, it's working now, but what are you going to when they start taking all of that stuff away? As far as uh, uh, Jason Peters, if you go into the game with a four-year-old left tackle, knowing his history of not, finishing seasons lately and you're not ready for him to be out then shame on you right and the first play of the game first play Tevin Jenkins comes in I'm looking at his stance and I was sitting at the NBC after show and I go oh my god he's one-on-one right just by his stance I could tell I'm like he's one-on-one and sure enough he sets turns to the sideline too early and gets bull rushed uh, into the quarterback and he's holding literally the ref could have called him for holding on almost every play from when he came in which like you said is not shocking he hasn't played football in 13 months, he hasn't had a live snap this year because they don't go live at practice, right? And he, he wasn't at camp. And the last time he was there, he was at right tackle. So I don't think their, their um, scheme when he came in was good enough to help him. And, of course, that second down call in the second half is just ridiculous. After, again, you guys saw it. What did they run? Big zone read, option to Jakeem Grant. Look, that's not a run game. Look, that's not a run game. Like we're, now, now the Chicago Bears, okay, listen. We're going to feature. We're going to feature Jakeem Grant. We're going to feature Demir Bird, and we're going to feature Jimmy Graham. And I'm sitting there saying, "What in the hell is going on?" <laughs> the the lack of adjustments. I, I, I'm like I'm glad this was a good segue to at least my question. Like adjusting as things change in the game. So you have Jalen Johnson after the game saying, "Yeah, they adjusted. That they got." Devonte Adams away from me. I'm just thinking of that that one play action play where where Devonte Adams is coming underneath the formation and like oh man that's got to be hell for Jalen Johnson to try to carry that guy through all that uh, all 
the, the coverage, all the stuff in the middle, that mess in the middle. And then you have Matt Nagy say, oh, they did what we expected to do. They didn't, they didn't adjust. They, were, they weren't doing things that surprised us. Like when you hear that, like conflicting messages there, like what do you think, what do both you guys think as former players? You're watching, I mean, it's obvious, Watching, rewatching the game again last night, uh, I mean, they made some adjustments at the end of the end of the first half, you know, particularly that drive he scored on. If you look at it, they came out and they had Devontae in the slot. You had Jalen Johnson covering um, <clears throat> the number one receiver in man-to-man covers. And then you had, I think it was Xavier Crawford in the slot covering Devontae Adams. And they ran, uh, Devontae ran that wheel route in which Jalen Johnson had to take the number one receiver, which I think ran a post. That wheel route came underneath from Devontae Adams, which they had Xavier Crawford on it, and they scored right before the half. So, you know, Matt LaFleur and that Green Bay Packers staff had already started making their adjustments at the end of the second half uh, and the end of the first half going into the second half. And for you to not see that uh, is very disturbing. You know, like like Jalen Johnson said, you know, they ran a lot of pick routes to get Devontae involved. Uh, they did whatever they could to get the ball in their playmakers' hands. And, you know, obviously that's something that that we haven't done on our offensive side of the ball. And it's very disheartening and frustrating when you have you know, a, a head coach come up to the podium during his press conference and he doesn't recognize that, you know, his comment is, oh, that's football. Well, football as a head coach, you know, you have to be able to make the adjustments at halftime. The good coaches make the necessary adjustments to their game plan in order for their, uh, for their team to be successful. And we haven't been able to do that all year. So, yeah, that was I I wrote about that Monday. It was just weird, honestly. Like I I don't it, it, the the players on the field. He's seeing what's happening. For the head coach to come out and basically dismiss what the players like, said. Like, like as, as a player, is, are you like pissed by what he says? Like you know, like you you guys are in those meetings rooms. Like when the coach says, you know, they didn't adjust, but you feel like they adjusted, and he's basically disagreeing with everything you just said. Does that like make you mad? Like take me inside that locker room if you can, guys. You you have to remember that Jalen Johnson now, they've had a problem before, right? Wasn't he late to meetings? He put it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So they've been going in a different direction now for, for a little bit, right? And, and uh, J-Mac and I have both been through when your coach is, he's on the hot seat and uh, may, maybe even fired already, right? And you're in that building and it's kind of a weird place to be, man. It seems like we're on the podium and they're giving answers. Like, you know, I saw, I read Hogue's article on NBC Sports about um, about uh, Nagy saying that, oh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I probably should have went for it on that fourth and inches. Like, <laughs> look, <laughs> you don't say that unless you're a fired coach, okay? Yeah. You don't say those kind of things. Right. Uh, oh, you know what? Not I think about it. Well, well, yeah, I probably should have went for that fourth and inches, and Jalen Johnson is wrong. And, and it just seems to me like Nagy, when he comes up there, I, I don't even know if he knows what he's saying anymore, but I'm sure Jalen Johnson is not happy about the comment that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But as a player right now, as a young player, Jalen Johnson is going to be here. He's a good cornerback. He needs to just keep moving in the right direction. Sometimes easier said than done. Well, and I think the thing that you like about that is that not only did he bring up the adjustments the Packers made, but then he said, here's what I can do about it. I can become a player who can play in the slot if I learn these things. So at least from a, a you know analyzing a player's perspective, like you'd love to at least hear that he's saying the right things. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting was how open Matt Nagy left the door, Olin, to switching the tackles already. I, I'm just curious where you fall on that. It seems like Larry Borum's been pretty good. I mean, at least for a rookie, he's been pretty good over on the right side. All of a sudden, you start switching guys around. How do you handle this if Jason Peters uh, can't play? And quite frankly, it doesn't look like he's going to play this coming week. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys agree, but I thought the old line struggled a, little, struggled a little bit against the Cardinals and against the Packers. So uh, a lot of guys not playing their best football, including James Daniels. We see Cody White here get beat by uh, Kiki, Kiki Kingsley. Um, James Daniels got beat a couple times by the right guard. Sam Muscle were getting beat a couple times. So the old line together has been playing very well. I thought Larry Borum, the last two or three weeks, has taken a step back a little bit. Uh, the bull rush is really bugging him, getting pushed into the quarterback. Uh, I don't like switching guys all over the place on the offensive line. I, I, I'm not surprised Coach Nagy said that. Uh, look, they took James Daniels out of starting center spot a couple of years ago, put Cody, inserted Cody Whitehair. So um, sometimes guys who see the game, I always say guys see the game from seven on seven. They don't see the game from the line of scrimmage. They like the seven on seven look. Uh, they don't realize how hard it is to actually just move pieces around and move guys around. And every, someone's going to say, well, the Green Bay Packers are doing it well. 
when you have Aaron Rodgers as your Hall of Fame quarterback, uh, he changes everything. He makes everybody better. So uh, just to answer your question, Hope, I, I don't like it at all. I say leave him there. Uh, let's see if he can take a jump in his position. What do they got? Uh, three, four games left. Uh, let these guys settle in. Let them put all the film they can in at one spot and try to get better there. And, and look, you drafted Tevin Diggs to play left tackle. Let's find out. Let's find out if he can play left tackle. Let's go big picture a, a little bit here. Um, like we know what the stats say about Matt Nagy's offense. Like they're in the thirties. Mm-hmm. It's not good. Um, but what, like, what is your your eyes, your experience? tell you for forget the numbers like w- when you see it not just against the Packers but this entire season last season a little bit you know with all the changes at quarterback like what what is your experience guys what 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 is your eyes tell you about Matt Nagy's offense like to to me it feels just like like an assembly of different things that aren't working but tell me what you you guys got I mean, just you guys for think, me yeah. just summing it up is just incompetent you know if to put it in one word mm-hmm. i mean Week in and week out, you know, you have uh, a dynamic back who I think is is one of the better backs in the league, and, you know, you don't get him the ball. I think you got him the ball in the second half of that Green Bay game one time, you know, and I think, you know, as we know, when you have a rookie quarterback, uh, his best friend can be a solid running game. And to not call those runs is disheartening when you have a guy of this caliber. You know, coming out of the second half, it wasn't like you were – to start the second half, it wasn't like you were getting blown out. You know, you're right there. The game was within grasp. And instead of putting the pressure on your quarterback to come out and throw the ball 30 times when you do have two rookie uh, tackles starting, you know, lean on your running game a little bit. And I think that's something that he's failed to do. Uh, we saw that last year as well. That's something that he's failed to do his entire his entire tenure here. Uh, you know, he's wanted to win flash and that's throwing the ball all over the field. But at the same time, you know, you want to do that, but you, you can't get your, your, your star receiver involved. You know, I mean, you want to throw the ball, like Olin said, you look at the game from a seven on seven perspective, but hey, you can't get your, your your bona fide number one receiver the ball consistently. And, you know, it's it's just incompetent and it's disheartening from from watching it, you know, as an analyst or as a Bears fan right now uh, to see, you know, we're in the same boat pretty much, maybe even worse than we were last year. Uh, and you do, you got talent on that side of the ball, but you can't score points and you can't come up with a with a consistent uh, game plan week in and week out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Olin, you can chime in on this too, but I just want to quickly say, you know what, the that to go back to what Nagy was saying about Jalen Johnson's comments about the adjustments, his point was that he thought that they adjusted more by running more power in the running game. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, there you go. Like, how about you try that? I mean, that, that's the that's the funny thing is like it's it's what you're talking about, J Mag. You have this running back who's been your best player on offense. Um, hey, they, hey, maybe that's another thing you could have done there. Yeah, look, they it's 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 confusing, right? Um, it's confusing when you hear them talk about these things. But but it, but back to John's question, is it's like they you you we always yell they shouldn't be running empty. They should run the ball, protect their quarterback. But from a coach's point of view. And from a from a football guy's point of view, man, you wish they could run empty, right? You wish they were good enough on the offensive line. So, uh, why are they bad? Because they're bad. Uh, they're bad at a lot of spots on their offense, and they have bad play callers. And they put bad play callers in the building. Besides Coach Nagy, all everybody else in there has not been successful in their NFL career as a play caller. Laser has not been successful. He's been fired. Uh, uh, Di Filippo has not been successful. He's been fired. Nagy was only successful for six or seven games. So when you look at the totality of their offensive staff, if you're shocked they're not good, well, I'm shocked you're shocked. Yeah, yeah. All those darn hitch routes, right? (laughs) (laughs) Third third and seven, five-yard hitch. Five-yard hitch. When when they lined up in empty on the first play, what was the bet in Vegas they were trying to throw a little hitch route to Allen Robinson over there at the slot? Like yeah. you, you could you you had to you had to give money to make money. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It was like minus three hundred. Allen hitched to Allen Robinson. Try to get him going. <laughs> minus three. <laughs> Let's get him going, guys. We're gonna scheme it up. We got a hitch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So. Uh, Dan Weeder in the Tribune today had a uh, a very lengthy, comprehensive piece, just sort of on like the state of the entire operation at this point. Um, Olin, you were heavily quoted uh, in this story as he went around and and got input from 
you know, people who have played for the Bears, know the Bears, know the organization, have strong opinions about what they should do to fix this. So, Olin, where do you stand on this? And I, I've heard some of this on your guys' podcast too, which is great, but how far up does this thing need to, to go before changes will really make an impact? Because the one thing we keep coming back to on our podcast is, you know, we can keep having these conversations about Nagy's offense and fix, you know, getting rid of him and changing that, but like, is it really going to change the organization? Is it really going to put Justin Fields, who I think we all like, in a position to really become a true franchise quarterback? Right. And the, the worst kept secret in Chicago and Illinois is the problem that the Chicago Bears actually have in their building, right? And here's where the Chicago Bears' biggest problem is to me. They've convinced themselves that not having a quarterback is their problem. It's not. The culture in their building is their problem. The standard they hold everybody to in their building is the problem. That is the problem they have. And that is not something not everybody knows. People know this. They know this about the Chicago Bears. So the things that we're saying, the things you guys are saying, the things I'm saying, obviously, uh, J Mac and I have been in the building. We have seen it operate. So uh, we know, we know you guys been in the building too. And I'm sure some things baffle you. Food there, uh, the way things are run. Uh, why is this person doing this? Why are they, why don't they run it at a level of a billion dollar business, right? Those are the questions you have to eventually ask yourself. Because look, if you want to win and you want to win consistently and not be a flash in the pan, you have to fix your standards and your culture in your building. And that's period. And, and then like you're saying, I, I started saying those things because I got tired of asking Nagy them to run the ball because they show you in Green Bay, they're not going right. to. They're not going to run the ball, right? So do they have problems? Yes. Uh, but, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, if they go and hire people, the same people, we'll be right back here four years again doing the same podcast. Um, my eyes say we'll be completely gone, so I'll be wearing glasses like J-Mac by them. <laughs> Well, that's like like the question, though, right? Like, oh, like I, I keep throwing this to, to people, like, like who do you trust more, like, to, to fix this? Do you trust Ryan Pace to find that next head coach, hire his third head coach, or do you trust George McCaskey and Ted Phillips to hire that next GM and that that next coach? Like, this is so layered, and you nail it on. It, it starts at the top. Like, it, it's it's got to. It's on. It's all on George McCaskey's desk. I mean, he has that quote. You know, I don't think we've won enough in George McCaskey's tenure. Well, well, you're you're not wrong, George. It's it has to start there, does it not? Like he has to reconsider how they're doing things in order for this to change. Yeah, I mean, I, like you almost said, you know, I don't trust none of them. You know, I mean, obviously there's evidence to show you year after year they've gotten it wrong. I mean, you had you had Tressman, you had Fox, now you have Nagy. You know, it hasn't worked. So. You know, you've got to, you know, find somebody that, that knows football that can actually do the hiring, you know, for you. Because obviously you, you failed in that aspect. You know, you're not good in that role. But you also have to be humble enough to to relinquish that role and find somebody that can, you know, ha handle that for you. So that way you can get the right football mind in the building. Because if you don't, you know, like Brother O said, you know, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the same repeated cycle that we've seen is going to be another head coach that's going to come in here uh, that initially we're all going to be excited about, but he's going to be set up to fail. You know, another, th another thing I look at uh, from a standpoint of our organization is uh, the development of players. You know, you look back and you look at how many picks we've had. And yes, we've hit on some, but, you know, we failed on a lot more picks than we've hit on. And we look at, you know, teams in our division, you know, I'll say Green Bay, uh, so to speak, you know, they do a great job of developing players. You know, they lose a defensive lineman. They don't bring nobody into free agency. The next man's up that they've been developing that they may have drafted in the later rounds. Uh, you look at all the receivers they have and Lazard and Marquez, uh, Valdez, Scanling, all these guys have been developed. Obviously, they have a good quarterback there, but those guys are developed and they get pieces in place to make their team successful. I don't feel like we do that. And I think it's a testament to not having the right football minds in that building. Guys, what what did Lovey Smith do that maybe mass or help? Because these same guys were well, I guess George wasn't in charge then, but like Ted Phillips was still the team president. And I would think overall the the same orga organizational issues were probably 
uh, still there towards the top when you guys were playing. What did Lovey Smith do to kind of overcome that or mask that where you guys managed to have a decent amount of success? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting question because did we, right? Did, did we have sustained success, right? We 2005, 2006, and in 2010 again, right? That's a, that's a big break right there. So to have sustained, sustained success in a building, uh, you need to have support of the whole building. And, and what really Lovey did was Lo- Lovey was Lovey's a very good NFL head football coach. And listen, when you have a first ballot Hall of Famer in the building, it covers up a lot of stench. It covers up a lot of things. Erlacher was that kind of player. He was a transcending player. And then you draft the best returner in the history of the NFL, and you surround with some key players, and all of a sudden you have a really good football team. But even then, 2006, really talented football team. You, you, you look at the decisions made after that year and you wonder what the hell, what the hell are they deciding? What, what are they thinking about? Right? Like who in that building didn't step in and say, guys, I understand that Thomas and Cedric Benson can't get along, but we got to keep Thomas Jones. Right? Someone has to be able to say something like that out in the, like when, when one guy's trying to make a decision, it has to be someone else stepping in and say, no. We're not getting rid of our best running back. Like, that doesn't make – we're a running football team. We're getting bit, bit rid of our best running back. That doesn't make any sense at all. It's like when Nagy and Ryan Pace, and I would get killed for this because he is a really good friend of mine, when two 40-year-olds, 40-year-old men get in a room and say, you know what we're going to do to become better at football? We're going to fire the best online coach in the world. We'll fire Harry Heastan, and all of a sudden, I'm sure our run game will get fixed, and then you go and you guys see the decisions they made on the offensive line. So all I'm saying is, that's why they don't have consistency in that building. They don't, like J Mac just said, they don't have enough guys giving an opinion on, okay, slow down. We're not trading Thomas Jones, who went on and had three or four or five great years for the Jets. It's having the right sounding boards in place. Mm. A lot of times it's Ted Phillips who's that sounding board for that GM mm-hmm. going back to the. A little Jerry less Angel. collaboration, just a yes. little less, a little less. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and that's the thing, like, because I think sometimes wonder, okay, what was, what would a so-called fo- head of football ops or football czar, what would that guy do other than hire the GM? But it's exactly what you're talking about. Those conversations. So when you hear Nagy, uh, we always hear, right? Okay, uh, Ted Phillips doesn't meddle in football. Well, then why do they meet every week? Why? Well, here, here, here's the thing, here, Adam. Here's the right. thing. I, yeah. I, I want to know what you think <laughs> about this. Let me ask you guys a question. A football czar, you know he's in charge. He walks down and says, and say, hey, 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 guys, how's it going, man? What do you guys think about the way this is being run over here? Right? I'm I, Okay, tell me. I'm going to get, oh, you know what? I'll get that shit straight. I'm sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Right? Like he is, like right now, you know what they would need right now? And, and we talked about this on the podcast. They would need a football czar making sure that these coaches who are probably looking for other jobs, we all know how that works, are already calling their friends and saying, we're out of here. I've heard about a few at bars. In town, I won't talk about it. I won't mention names, but we've already heard a few about those. I'm a football guy walking. And I say, Justin, how you feel about your drills in practice? How do you feel about the way he's coaching? And I pull him in. and I say, you better be doing your job. You better be doing your job. Yeah, because there's still four more games here, and you yeah, got a job ain't over. Trying to learn. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, job, job ain't over, man. Like I said, development. You know, just because you know, and, and right now, especially. For, for a lot of them, young, the young guys, and me and uh, Brother talked about this on our podcast last week, you know, it's evaluation time. It's evaluation time for all the guys who, you know, aren't bona fide guys who just made the roster this year or even guys who, who may be a little bit longer than two still on the roster. You know, they're auditioning, uh, you know, whoever comes in here next, whoever it may be, uh, if that happens, and they're auditioning for that coach, they're auditioning for every other team out here because, as we know, the NFL, you know, you're, you're graded upon your film, which is your resume. And if you don't have that solid resume, if they see guys tanking it uh, in a season that didn't go well, well, then, hey, you may not have a job. You know, that, that development word, like, I just keep thinking about all the changes that have been made. Not only a Nagy staff, you mentioned Harry Heastan, but, you know, Mark Helfrich, you know, he was a scapegoat, mm-hmm. too. Like, there's been so what many. What was a tight end coach's name, Jans? What was a tight end coach? Oh, it was um, 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 Gilbride, Kevin Gilbride, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm-hmm. but then there was more. Like this year, they, they like Sean Desai had a whole new staff, and they got like Tom Herman and Mike Pettin here is like, I don't know what they do really, but like mm-hmm. they're they're advisors. <laughs> I, I don't know what they do. I, I really don't know what they do. 
Don't know what they Yeah, do. you don't make the play to keep Jay Rogers, right? Who who's a well respected, who's done a great job yeah. to make a play to keep him. I mean, I don't know what happened to all of that, right? Brandon Staley, I know for a fact he wanted to stay. He wanted to stay and coach outside yeah. linebackers for the Bears. Yeah. They move mm-hmm. on because they want Monaquino. I mean, it's just like you're saying, there's a lot that happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the the consistent change and it goes back again to having the right people in place to to identify Brandon Staley. Oh, maybe this guy could be a star. You know, maybe we should want to keep him. Jay I, Rogers. I will tell you this. From the people I knew in the building, he was identified yeah. as mm-hmm. this guy is a football guy. Yeah. Like he does his job and he's extremely good at it. That's the words I heard while he was here about him. And next thing you know, he's he's coaching in Denver, right? It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. A year later, he's the head coach of the mm-hmm. now LA, uh, LA Chargers, you know? Yeah. Well, and we've talked about this before. Like, we don't necessarily get to know these guys, like, who they truly are because we only get to talk to them, like, twice a month and, you know, what are they behind the scenes? But Johns and I have both said this. The first time we talked to Brandon Staley, man, he just had this vibe, like this vibe about him that was different. Like you could just tell he was somebody, whether or not he was a good good coach or not, you could tell he was somebody that when he talked, people were going to listen to what he had to say. And that's a big quality in a coach. So um, mm-hmm. I think that's a fair point. Hey, the other thing I want to touch on with you guys, because this was also in Dan Weeder's article, and it's been talked about, um, and I'm a firm believer in this. I just sometimes don't feel like this organization listens to outside voices that should matter. And that includes you two guys. Seriously. Like when, what, Olin, when you get quoted in the newspaper or you're on the football after show or you're on this podcast or you guys are just doing your podcast, like you guys are saying all these things. But I know that you guys feel this way, at least to a certain extent. And I've talked to other former players who feel the same way. You don't feel, and and tell me if I'm wrong, but you don't feel like you're necessarily being listened to. And that kind of would bother me if I was a fan of this team, because I see respected people who played for the organization, know what the problems are. Like you guys have detailed on this podcast right here. You would hope that they would listen to that stuff. And so I don't. If either one of you guys want to touch on that, I just want to kind of close well, on that conversation. Uh, they don't. They don't listen to me because I'm, I'm just a fullback. They're not even around anymore. <laughs> Nobody cares what I got to say, <laughs> uh, brother. Yeah, you, you, you was a hell of a special teams guy too, though. <laughs> Four phase. Four phase. So on, on the on the other on the other on the other end, uh, brother. Oh, obviously, I mean, he's got the credibility. Um, you know, we know why they don't listen to brother. Oh, certain things we won't discuss on the podcast, brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they don't listen. You know, I don't know why they don't uh, uh, make the decisions to bring in the right football people. You know, another guy who they had in that building was a uh, Chris Ballard, a guy who was around for a long time, you know, uh, and didn't really even give him an opportunity to, to be the next GM. And what does he do? He goes, he leaves, he goes right next door to the Indianapolis Colts and he's turning that thing around. You know, it's just, it's just frustrating uh, to see it, you know, happen you know, all the time, them making the wrong move or they're a step behind. So, you know, like I said, they don't listen to me. I don't know what brother was going to say. They don't listen to me because I'm just a fullback. So, yeah. uh, I mean, listen, the, the whole do they listen to us, do they not? I'm sure what they think is when you say these things, they think they're saying the same things, I'm sure, up there, right? They they just, they don't have the right people to get to where the, the answer needs to be. They don't think they're the problem. And that's the biggest problem they have. As far as listening to you i mean they could invite you in the building you would say the same stuff and they have heard it before and you know what they would do they would nod their head mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. and yeah, they would listen yeah. it's just they wouldn't they couldn't sit in a room and tell you like they hire it's i, I hire Tressman over bruce Aarons, right i hire i i make the i hire pace over ballard i i just they make the wrong decisions about football and they don't they don't know how to watch the film and ask a coach why the hell are we running? Why are we? Why is Demir Bird running out of the backfield? He's not going to be here next year. Why not throw it to Khalil Herbert, who's a draft pick? Why don't we give the ball to Montgomery there instead of running a, a, a option to Jakeem Grant? Right. So yeah. um, it's just look. Jakeem Grant had a great game. Big fan of his. And Bill Belichick wouldn't put a Jakeem Grant on his team, right? He wouldn't. He wouldn't. Jakeem Grant wouldn't be on Bill Belichick's team. It is, he's, he's the kids. He's gonna end up making a mistake at some point on special teams, and, and it's just it, it turns out good sometimes, and it turns out really bad. There's just no consistency in that. So 
All I'm saying is even on even on a week where a guy has a great game, you got to be able to see things clearly. It, it sounds like I'll, I'll put it like this: like they could take the information, they could take the the criticism, they could take what you're telling them, but they're not in the position to challenge it. They're not in position to to seriously question. Is is, is that what you're saying? Like they, the, they could question it, you could have the conversation. But what I'm saying is. They, I think they say the same things in their building. Yeah, okay. I think they say that. I think that we have to hire different guys. We have to do things. I think they're saying that right now. We have to do things differently. It hasn't worked. I don't think they're capable of it. So they would have to hire somebody else, not just take advice. They would have to hire somebody to change their culture, to change their standard, and they would have to step back and say, look, you're right. Whatever you say goes. It just goes. Whatever you say should be done in the weight room. Whatever you say should be done in the lunchroom. Whatever you say should be done with the media side, it goes. And, and and the fact is, they have not been humble enough to take that step back in order for this organization to move forward. That's, yeah. that's part of it, too. That's part of it, too. John, you got anything else for these guys? No, no, no. 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 I, I just think it, it starts... It has to start at the top, right? We've heard George McCaskey on record multiple times saying how he likes the structure of his organization, but it's only on him. Who like it, it's his decision to change the structure of it, right? Like it, it's just the the truth of the matter. He said he likes having his GM report to the team president, and this is what we've had for God, how many years now? The same results. So, well, let, let me ask you guys this before before we go. As much as you guys have been in. Uh, that interview room at the end of the year, and, and you see Ryan Pace, you see Jordan McCaskey. Anyway, has anybody ever asked them what their philosophy is? What is their philosophy in their building? What kind of culture are they looking for? What kind of football team do you want? Because that directly leads to who you hire to run your football team. It's so I'd like point. to hear yep. George McCaskey yeah. Yeah. say, I'd like to hear him say, Adam, I'd like to hear them say, I'd like to hear him ask that. You yeah. know, George, what? how much do you – know about football and how much do you love it? Can you watch film and tell us what's wrong with your offense? Yeah. <laughs> have them articulate it. Like, what do you want to feel? Yeah. Well, no, I but, say, but, but I think it'd be a good thing for him to think about. Yeah. No. And I think that's a fair point. I, th- I would say that probably the last time that that came up on was probably uh, after 2014 when they clearly didn't have a direction and they, you know what happens a lot of times is then you overcompensate. So you had a guy like Phil Emery who rubbed everybody yeah. the wrong way and pissed off Brian Erlacher, rightfully so. You know, like for Erlacher to be mad about that, he should have been mad about that. And it wasn't just him. And that trickled through the building. And it's like they overcompensated by going with Ryan Pace, who was kind of the safe choice, right, over Ballard, who wanted to shake things up a little bit. And yeah, they go with Pace because he's this really nice guy. He's a guy you want to have a beer with, right? And, and you know like he's, he's from Lake Forest, man. He's a Lake Forest guy, right? <laughs> and then now you hear about Trace Armstrong, who I love Trace, but tell me where Trace looks like he's from. Lake Forest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I don't know. Where I, I live like up front. Where I like up front. Oh, that's like, listen, that's how you get canceled. Look, in 2014, <laughs> um, did he, but did he say it, Adam? Do you remember him saying, like, this is, this is who we want to be? This is like, I, I think there's a quote out there from Mike Dick, and he said, when George Hallis was here, the philosophy was we were going to hit you. Yeah. And then when we were done hitting you, we we're going to hit you again. And we're just going to keep hitting you until we win ball games. It doesn't mean that has to be your philosophy. What I mean is that, that you have to be stand for something or you don't know what you are. Yeah. An organizational identity. I think, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you see it in places like Pittsburgh. Like, oh, yeah. they, mm-hmm. they know what they yeah. want to be. Yeah. And, and like, right. all their decisions are predicated on having that identity, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I could be yeah, wrong. Like when Mike Tomlin walks in the building, it's like, oh, man, this is yeah. who we are. Yes. Yeah. That, like, give him a job. Like, we, he's going he's gonna to run this the way we want it run. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I think that, and you know what? The Bears probably had that back when George Hallis was around, right? Like they, that's why they celebrate their history so much. But it seems like ever since then, it's mm. it's it's changed, and they're trying to find that. So, well, um, and you and you said it perfectly, right? What did you just say? You said if you go one way, you go so far the other way. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what that means. You don't know what the hell you are. You don't know what you're doing. You're yeah. confused. You don't you know, know what you want. You just, mm-hmm. yeah. So. All right, guys. Hey, we really appreciate it. We got appreciate uh, it, guys. 
look at these guys. We got Olin Cruz. He's uh, his gym. Look, you guys, you know, people listening to this, their kids should, like, trust you two. That's what I have to say. You know, Olin <laughs> and J-Mac, they'll take care of you. J-Mac's in his office at Carmel. I, I think this is a recruiting message from Carmel about to happen here, Olin. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm ready for it, man. I, listen, on, I'm a big on. fan of what they're doing up in Carmel. I was up there one day watching J-Mac coach. Adam had the day off for whatever reason. Uh, hey, listen, hey, hey, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm like Jimmy Graham. Listen, I get Wednesdays off. Listen, I get Wednesdays listen, off. I, I have, I have six kids. I've never seen a guy take so much time off for one. But whatever, you got to do you. You know what I mean? You got to do your oh, thing. But one kid, one kid must have got a lot harder from when I had one. But uh, I'm a big fan of J Mag and, and what you guys are all doing at Carmel. And you should definitely send your kids to these guys. Obviously, I'm also a big fan of Coach Talasek and Loyola. So I'm a fan of all of them. And please don't. Uh, don't send your kids to my gym. It's a private gym. I will throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He will. Throw, yeah, he's thrown me out a couple of times. He throws me out all the time, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, you punch you punched me on purpose in the face during boxing. There's no need for that. And I'm, wearing my, guys, I'm, wearing my, I'm wearing my headgear tomorrow. You're a little riled up, so I'll be I'll Hey, be, I'll hey be wear those prepared. glasses. Wear those glasses. Like, you can't hit a man in glasses. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys all in we'll see you appreciate it man right, make guys. sure you check out see the no guys. name Thank football you. podcast it is a must listen j mac we appreciate it man there he goes there there you go awesome stuff i think we haven't won enough under the leadership of george mccaskey and that's what we're working on good that's, pull reference that one like 10 minutes ago that's what it was that see i just had it on delay i had it on delay and i don't think uh i don't think olin knows i have a daughter now too that's okay. Now he knows. When he listens. Back. It's a little different with a newborn. Wednesdays were my day I to take my son to soccer. That's what it was. But yeah, he did come out. He did come out uh, <laughs> the one day I wasn't there that week. And then uh, and he rightfully called me out for it. When there Hilarious. was a newspaper story about what I was doing. That's uh, That's fine. That's why we love Olin. Uh, hey, that's why we love both of those guys. That's why we want to have them on the podcast. We appreciate their time talking so long about all this stuff. Uh, this conversation is only going to continue right over the next four weeks. Things to figure out, what's going down. John Z, you had a big piece on Ryan Pace today on The Athletic that people should check out, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns, where you go to find that and all of your content. Kevin Fishbane as well. Uh, you can read me at NBCSportsChicago.com. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Hogue, at Adam Johns. Follow those guys, Jason McKee, Olin Cruz. They're both uh, awesome on Twitter to follow as well. And um, I think that's going to do it for us. We'll be back. I think Friday we'll be back. Friday because yeah. I got the Just Monday. Good. It's good to be back, too. It's yeah. good to be back, too. Yeah, yeah so. it's, it's good to have you back as well. Missed you in Green Bay. I uh, did not miss that drive. But I like it kind of did. I like, I like going to Green Bay. I like the drive up. I hate the drive home. Well, it's always in the middle of the night. It's always in the middle of the night. You always see more deer than cars. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Well, there was that one year there where we saw more cars in the uh, ditches. Than oh, yeah. On the road. Yeah. yeah. The snow. So, uh, but yeah, I always like going up to Lambo. And, um, you know, when you're going up there, you make that turn on the 172, you go across the river, and the only thing you see, because there are no buildings in Green Bay, is just that giant football cathedral. You also see the greatest Division three school there is in St. Norbert College. No, you see the sign producing guys like me. But, you know, okay, no, it's there. I saw look the St. Norbert left. sign. I didn't you, see you the school. You look to your right, you see Lambo. you look to the left, right on the Fox River, the scenic Fox River, it's SNC. St. Norbert. Football powerhouse. Actually, they are Division three. I don't know, man. I haven't seen them in the playoffs lately. I see North Central's in the Stag Bowl. Oh this week. yes, that that is true. You know, St. Thomas was so good they had to go to D one. My cousin at St. John's. I mean, these are these are the all time winningest coach up there at St. John's. It, you know, these yeah. are real. These are real football D three powerhouses. I don't know why I'm giving you shit about. <laughs> We're going Norbert down right to Division three road here. Okay. I think I think it's just the pain of the Notre Dame loss still still kicking in. J Mac being on the pod today, just <laughs> bringing it out of me. You knew it was going to be mentioned. Oh, yeah. I'm the one who mentioned it. All right. We're out of here. We'll be back Friday previewing the game against the Vikings, and uh, we'll talk to you then. See ya. The Packers, Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, go Bears. <laughs>